Hi guys, in this video I'm going to talk about MCMC ABC. So this is from a paper by Marjoram from 2003. And I want to start by reminding the problem. So the problem is that we have intractable likelihood. Uh, usually it is generated by a simulator. So you have some parameter, you can plug it into a simulator and it gives you some data value, some X simulated, and, but you can't put in numbers the probability or the density of X given that data. You can still sample uh, from the simulator, meaning you can always plug in another theta or the same theta and get um, a new X. Okay, and the solution that rejection ABC has from the previous video is you sample theta from the prior, you use that to simulate an X simulated, and then uh, you only accept theta if X or some summary statistics, some summary function of it, because X could be a, a, a whole sample that you have from the simulator and from the observed data. You only accept data if it's close enough to the actual observed data that you had before. So let's say if the summary statistic is the mean, so only if the mean of the simulated sample is close enough to the mean of the observed sample, then you accept data. Okay, otherwise you discard it. And so a good question to ask is, what is the difference between a regular rejection sampling and this rejection ABC method? So uh, the original rejection sampling is we want to get some samples from a true posterior that is usually unnormalized. We can't, we know it up to a normalizing constant. Okay, and what you do is you find some envelope uh, distribution, uh, some distribution that you can sample from, yeah, some G of theta that you know, and it's easy and you, and you can uh, sample from it and some bounding constant M such that M times this uh, easy distribution, this proposal distribution is always bigger than the unnormalized uh, distribution. And there are ways to find M. I have a video about it actually. Uh, it's one of my earliest videos. Yeah, and then you draw samples from G and you accept those samples with this probability, with this, with this ratio. And then the samples that you have are samples from the true posterior. We can write this a bit differently. So in MCMC ABC paper, they actually write it differently, but uh, there is some underlying assumption, otherwise it's incorrect what they wrote. Uh, and that underlying assumption is that either this likelihood is discrete and then is below equals uh, one, or that if it's not discrete, then we have to demand that it's less or equal to one on all the domain of X. So given either one of these assumptions, we can take the proposal to be the prior, set M equal to one, and then uh, the unnormalized posterior is uh, the prior times the likelihood. This is always less than uh, one times the prior because the likelihood we said we demand it's less or equal to one. Okay, so now your acceptance probability, if you put everything in this formula, well, this is this, and M is one, G is this, these cancel out, and your acceptance probability is just the likelihood. So we can actually view rejection ABC as simply doing rejection sampling, ordinary rejection sampling, but trying somehow to overcome the problem of not knowing this likelihood. So if we take another look at rejection ABC, we see that we sample from the prior. And at this point, we would really like to know what is the probability of X observed given theta, because if we knew this, we would just accept uh, theta with this probability as we just saw. Instead, we, we don't know it. So we plug that theta into a simulator, simulate X sim. And then if X sim is equal to X observed, we accept theta as a sample point from the posterior and otherwise we throw that theta. But actually the probability that X sim is equal to X observed is exactly the probability of X observed given theta, right? What is the probability that given a theta we accept it 
well, it's just a probability that we get X observed, right? That some random variable, I denote it as X sim, which is the random variable that we get from uh, the simulator, that given theta, the simulator gives us X observed. And this is exactly the probability as before. Okay, so we see that this whole process is just a way to overcome the um, difficulty in regular rejection sampling of not knowing the likelihood, the X observed given theta. And similarly, if we go from this approach, we want to do rejection sampling, we can't, we just do a little work around it. We can do the same with MCMC -MC or sequential MC which have some benefits over regular rejection sampling. Yeah, for example, MCMC is considered better than rejection sampling, uh, but the con is that the observations are not independent. So the samples are not independent, they are dependent. And it also can get stuck on certain situations. So in these algorithms as well, we need the likelihood, we don't have it, let's just find a workaround. Okay, and I'll just mention that um, these workarounds in ABC, they still have these two major flaws, right? They are still really rely on ad hoc decisions because you still need some threshold distance matrix, summary statistic, et cetera, and they still suffer from the curse of dimensionality. So let's look at the MCMC uh, regular algorithm the, without the ABC. So for example, Metropolis Hastings, you start from a random point for, and drawn from the prior, and then you need some proposal or a jumping distribution or a transition kernel, or it has many names. So some distribution that tells you, given the point that you are, it finds you the next point. It suggests the next point according to some, some distribution. Then it, it gives you some point and you accept that new point with this probability over here. Okay, where this is the regular Metropolis algorithm and this is the Hastings correction when you have a uh, proposal distribution, which is not symmetric. And if you don't accept uh, this new point, then you just set your new sample point to be the same as the previous sample point. Okay, so notice in uh, MCMC ABC, the problem is that we don't know these middle terms. We don't know the PX given theta. So one solution given in the paper is maybe we approximate that alone. Uh, we draw Again, many, many simulations. And we count how many times they, they get the actual X observed. We divide it by the number of simulations. And this is some estimator for the, this uh, probability. But this is, of course, only in a discrete case. You can generalize this to continuous setting, but you need to use some other kernels. Uh, and also, you need to sample a lot again. So this is actually not what the MCMC ABC algorithm does. Instead, what you do is this. You start again with some random point drawn from the prior. You propose a new point based on your um, proposal distribution. You plug that in to the simulator, and you get an X simulated. And then if it is equal to X observed, then you accept it with this probability. And notice that it's very similar to this. We only take off the middle terms. We just throw them away and we say we don't need them. Okay, so if it's not equal to X observed, you keep the last point the same. If it is equal to X observed, then you sample from a uniform distribution and compare it to this thing over here. If it's below this, uh, you accept it. If it's above this, you reject it. And rejection, again, means that you are just setting the next point to be the same as the previous point. And also note that if the prior is uniform, then this two cancels out. If, the, if Q is symmetric, these two cancel out. And then it kind of looks like regular rejection ABC because um, you don't have this extra accept with probability step, but actually it's not because we are not sampling from the prior, we are sampling from some uh, proposal distribution. Okay, this is just some side note. And why does this work? Well, for MCMC, we have to show the detailed balance equation. Uh, so let's show it for the regular MCMC and then show it for this new variation and see why it still works. 
So for regular MCMC, let's first assume, uh, and this assumption is without loss of generality, we could have assumed otherwise, and it would just change uh, the computation in a, in a trivial manner. So let's assume that we, let's mark this probability, yeah, for the regular MCMC algorithm. Let's mark it with H, okay? And it's H of um, going from theta to theta dash, right? This is the probability that we are using to accept a point when we move from theta to theta dash from some, from some previous, uh, we can also call this theta t, to some new proposed point theta dash. Okay, and let's assume that this is below uh, one for without loss of generality. So the detailed balance equation, uh, what we need to show is that the posterior uh, times a move from a current point to a new point is equal to the posterior uh, at that new point times moving from the current point to that new point. Okay, so this is what we need to show and let's really show it. So this stays the same. Uh, moving from one point to another point means that we have to propose it in regular MCMC, right? From using the transition kernel. And then we have to accept it with this probability, right? With this probability over here. Now, this we can use base rule to develop for this. And this we can just plug in this, right? Because we said we are assuming this is below one. If this is below one, it means that it's equal to this. Now let's see what cancels out. So um, this and this cancels out with this and this. This cancels out with this. Okay, I marked it all in red. And we are left with the white terms over here. Now let's take these three terms, mark them blue, and leave the other terms in a queue. And use base rule again to get this. Okay, Q stays the same. But now, what is h theta given theta dash? Well, it means that we are just switching everything, switching between theta dash and theta here. And it will be just equal to 1 over this. And we said that before, this thing is uh, less than 1. So 1 over it will be above 1. So taking the minimum will be 1. So this is basically just multiplying by 1. But it's OK because we assumed this before. OK? And then this too is just the transition from theta dash to theta. And we have the detailed balance equation. OK, now let's see what changes when we are using uh, MCMC ABC. So again, we assume without loss of generality that the probability uh, of acceptance is below 1. And we start out the same. But now notice what is exactly needed when we move from one point to another in MCMC ABC. So we needed the transition kernel suggest this new point. We need that this new point also gives out X observed. And instead of X observed, I just write X here, yeah, in all of these equations. And then we also need that uh, to accept that point with uh, this probability H. Okay, so we do the same. We use base rule here, and then we uh, develop uh, what h is here. And we there are some again some terms that cancel, so p theta with p theta, q with q. Okay, and these are the things that are left. Let's take p x given theta dash and p theta dash uh, together with p of x, and and put everything else after, and then using base rule again, we get this thing over here. Uh, Q stays the same, X given theta stays the same. Again, we can use H because this is essentially one for the same reason as before. And then all of this thing over here is equal to the opposite transition. So we see again that we get the detailed balance equation. And just to give my own intuition, which could be totally wrong, why we can throw away these two terms and just cancel them when we go to MCMC ABC. It's kind of if both uh, the old point and the new point, if we accept them, they manage to create the same data, right? They manage to create the same X. So the probability of the data given either 
should be roughly the same and the ratio should be roughly equal to one. So we can discard this. This is my own intuition. Take it with a grain of salt. Okay, let's switch into R and see how to code this. This is for doing KDE plots. This is for sampling from bivariate normal. And I'm using the same example as before uh, from the previous video, only now I will use MCMC. Okay, so this is the simulator as before. This is the summary statistics as before. And now instead of a prior, I need a proposal. And for the sake of simplicity, I will put both the prior and the proposal to be the same, uh, multivariate normal, bivariate normal. Uh, for the proposal, it's centered around the point that it's at. For the prior, it's centered around zero. And the covariance matrix is just a diagonal with 10. Okay, so 10 times i. Okay, and we start with some random draw from the prior. And I will count, I will use C as a counter to count how many times we are changing and not getting stuck on the same point. Uh, what's happening here is that I'm using the proposal, using Q to suggest a new point, simulating a new uh, X observed using that point. And the simulator samples uh, a sample of this size using this parameter. Okay, then I sample from a uniform distribution between zero and one. This will be my acceptance probability. I calculate the probability of the new point given the, uh, the prior, and I calculate the probability of the previous point from the prior, and then I calculate H. And notice I don't use Q here because Q is symmetric, right? And uh, it doesn't matter where I center it, it's the same um, Gaussian. And so the probability of moving from one point to another is exactly equal from as the probability of moving from that point to the first point. And then I use the same uh, two norm and the same threshold of three, but I don't just need this. I also need that uh, the acceptance probability is H. So I uh, also ask that you use below H. If it happens, I accept that new point. If not, I set the new point to be as the old point. So let's run this. Okay, it finished. Let's see, we accepted around 16% of the point or 17, 16 and a half percent of the point. If we plot them, they look like this. We use the KDE, it looks like this. Yeah, it seems like um, at least the mean is quite close, right? The true theta was minus five and five. This looks like the, the, the mean of the posterior sample is quite close. I'm not sure what this thing over here is. Um, but anyway, um, I don't really know how to calculate the true posterior in this problem. This is analytically hard um, because we have a product of sums in the GMM. But it is a bit reassuring for me that the posterior mean is quite close to the true mean. So I hope this satisfies you at least. Um, in any case, this is all I wanted to show in this video, the MCMC ABC algorithm. I hope you enjoyed and see you in the next one.